Hi, I'm Dave Baring, Technical Director at Traystar, and welcome to another Tech Talk. Today we're talking about fluoropolymers. And fluoropolymers is really a large family of materials that uh, have as their primary structure fluorine and carbon atoms. Um, it is the diversity of those fluorine and carbon atoms and the addition and subtraction of ethylenes and chlorines and a number of other things that uh, give us a very diverse family of materials. So we're going to talk today about what those different materials are, how they differ from one another, um, and also how they're similar to one another. Um, first of all, let's talk about processing. There are different uh, processing techniques that we can use to produce fluoropolymers. Uh, most people know fluoropolymers as PTFE or Teflon. Um, Teflon, in its traditional form, uh, is actually a talc type material. It's almost a, uh, like baby powder when you first see it. Um, and it's a very unique material in the way it's processed because it's the only one of the fluoropolymers that does not melt. Um, you actually form it and then you center it, uh, very much like uh, powdered metal technology. Uh, the other materials that we'll talk about are all melt processable materials. So they can be injection molded, compression molded, extruded into thin films. Um, there's also variations that are used to make uh, dispersions. You're all familiar with the Teflon coated pans. That is actually a dispersion technique. So we'll talk about what these different materials are, what makes them different. Uh, but first of all, let's understand what makes them all the same. The common characteristics of fluoropolymers uh, on the plus side is that they uh, are chemically inert. Um, there are some exceptions, but uh, very few, in that the chemical inertness is pretty universal across the pH scale. Uh, most of the fluoropolymers have a very broad temperature range. Uh, some of them will go down to cryogenic temperatures uh, very easily. Um, and then the high temperature ranges can be anywhere from 300 to 500 plus Fahrenheit. Uh, all of the fluoropolymers d exhibit very low friction uh, properties. The PTFE is obviously the best of those, and that's why it's so common in uh, seals and bearings and so forth. Um, all fluoropolymers have very good dielectric values. Um, Depending on which of the fluoropolymers you use, it's better in some than others. Uh, but they all have very good dielectric properties in terms of insulative um, and strength and uh, dissipative factors and so forth. Um, fluoropolymers are all good thermal insulators. Um, like all plastics, they are good th thermal insulators, but the fluoropolymers are exceptionally good. So if you're looking for something to act as a thermal insulator, any of the fluoropolymer family is a good call here. And then finally, um, some of these materials with certain additives, uh, even the melt processable versions of fluoropolymers, have very good wear, uh, wear resistance. And so we'll talk about a few of those as well. Now, on the negative side, most fluoropolymers are pretty expensive. Um, PTFE used to be pretty expensive in the scope of things, but now the PTFE uh, is the least expensive of all the fluoropolymer resins. Um, one of the other issues is processability. Uh, some of these materials can be processed only a few ways, others can be processed many ways, and so uh, we have to pick and choose which material we're going to use in terms of how it's processed. Um, many fluoropolymers without certain fillers to support it will have very high uh, uh, cold flow. Uh, Teflon, PTFE, is very well known for its cold flow properties. Um, on the upside, that makes it a very good gasket. On the downside, it makes it really good for nothing else. Um, and then expansion rates, thermal expansion rates. The fluoropolymers tend to be on the high side, uh, really no better or worse than uh, most engineering plastics. Um, certainly not as good as some of the very high-end, um, high-performance materials. So let's take a look at 
uh, some of these materials individually. And we'll start with the one that's the most common, and that's PTFE, polytetrafluorethylene. PTFE uh, is, as I said before, a pretty unique material in that it can be blended with a lot of other materials, uh, but it does not melt. So as a result, it's pretty much restricted to a single or actually two different processes, and that's compression molding and a ram extrusion. Um, it is the most diverse because of its ability to blend with so many other fillers. Um, if you've watched the Rulon presentation, you'll remember that uh, there are literally hundreds of Rulon materials, all of which are blended PTFEs. So um, the PTFE allows us to do a lot of interesting things in terms of fillers uh, to enhance properties, where uh, electrical properties, uh, insulative properties. Uh, some of the additives we use include glass, carbon powder, carbon fiber, graphite, uh, a number of different minerals are used as fillers, and then we can also blend other polymers in. Um, it, of all the fluoropolymers, uh, PTFE has the broadest temperature range. Um, it will go all the way down to cryogenic temperatures and up to 550, uh, in some cases even as high as 600 degrees Fahrenheit on a continuous basis. Uh, PTFE is fully inert. There are very, very few materials that will attack PTFE, and the chemistries that do attack it are actually the chemistries that we use to etch PTFE so that it can be bonded. Um, most PTFEs are structurally pretty weak, and it's uh, for that reason we have to add the fillers to help strengthen it in terms of physical properties. Um, some of the trade names that we know PTFE as, of course, Teflon. Uh, Teflon was the first invented by DuPont back in the late 30s. Um, but over the years, it's become a very competitive, almost generic product with many different suppliers now in the marketplace, including Daikin out of Japan with a product called Neoflon. Uh, Dyneon has a product called Hostaflon. Asahi is Fluon, and Solve is a product called Algoflon. Those are the primary suppliers of PTFE resin. And then on top of that, there's a myriad number of, of companies that blend the PTFE with other materials to make us the compounds that we commonly use and commonly relate to PTFE. The first of the melt processable materials we're going to look at is ETFE, or ethylene tetrafluorethylene. Uh, it's best known by its trade name, uh, Tefzel, which is a product from DuPont. Um, Tefzel still falls under the category of Teflon products out of the DuPont family. But ETFE is a fairly unique in some of its properties. Um, first of all, of all of the fluoropolymers, it has the best radiation resistance. Uh, this is the material that we recommend if somebody, uh, someone is going to have um, a seal or a gasket or a bearing or something that might be in direct exposure to high levels of radiation. And we're talking high levels of radiation for long periods of time. Uh, ETFE has very good physical strength, uh, has very good abrasion resistance, and it's mechanically a very, very tough material. Uh, we can add glass to Tefzel to even increase the strength, increase its stiffness, uh, like if you wanted to use it for a, a valve seat on a high-pressure uh, valve. And uh, also its impact strength is uh, dramatically improved by adding glass. It's very good chemical resistance. Uh, temperature range is minus 148 to plus 302. That is the range that we consider continuous. Um, we do have testing that shows uh, what happens beyond 302 degrees Fahrenheit, and while it may still function, there's a dramatic drop-off in physical strength once you pass that point. So our recommendation is 302 at the top end. Uh, ETFE can be injection molded, extruded, it can be compression molded, and it's fairly easy to be uh, to machine. Uh, we can also make ETFE in the form of thin wall tubing, and so it's very popular in applications where you may have uh, both a chemical environment, a high gamma radiation exposure, 
um, and it's used for everything from wire and cable wraps and insulators. So it's a very, very diverse material. The next material we're going to look at is ECTFE. Uh, this is ethylene chlorotetrafluoroethylene, uh, better known in the industry as HALAR. Uh, this is a chemistry where we're taking a copolymer of ethylene and chlorotrifluoroethylene and combining them. Uh, this product is very compatible uh, with pretty much the whole pH range, especially in strong acids and strong bases. It has very good barrier properties. It's uh, very non-porous, and so as a barrier material in gases, and especially in strong acids, um, it's a, a very, very good material in, in that media. Uh, electrical properties are very good. Um, sometimes when you introduce a chlorine, uh, which, which we do have in this uh, particular version of fluoropolymer, uh, the chlorines tend to degrade the electrical properties slightly, so that's something we need to take a look at if you're uh, concerned about uh, certain dielectric factors. Uh, excellent fire resistance, got low flame spread and low smoke uh, generation. Uh, the temperature range on ECTFE is uh, cryogenic up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it is one of the other favored materials for cryogenic applications. It does not embrittle and um, it does very well at holding its, uh, its uh, physical properties, even at uh, cryogenic temperatures. Uh, one of the other things about the ECTFE is that its natural finish, whether it's injection molded or film um, or compression molded part, it's a very, very smooth material. It has very nice flow properties to it. So um, if you're looking for a, a part like a pump body or... Um, uh, fitting or something like that where you need uh, very good uh, surface finish, this material tends to be the one that uh, has the best finishes available to it. Um, and finally, ECT, ECTFE has very good mechanical properties, um, good abrasion resistance, and impact strength. Uh, the, next, the next one we're going to look at is PCTFE. This is one of my favorite floor polymers only because it is so easy to work with in terms of manipulating its structure. Uh, I've had a lot of success with this material in some very, very difficult applications. Um, the interesting thing about PCTFE, which by the way used to be known as KELF many, many years ago. Uh, KELF was a product from 3M and um, 3M has gone through a number of changes and sell-offs and so forth. So the PCTFE is now a product that uh, is brought in from Japan, and, um, uh, but it's still the same product and uh, still has a very, very good reputation in uh, certain environments. The reason it's unique is that uh, this product, this material, can be manipulated uh, to various levels of crystallinity. And what makes that interesting is that uh, of all the fluoropolymers, uh, this is the one that we can make more amorphous or more crystalline than any of the others. And so uh, for applications where you have, say, high temperatures in a chemical environment um, and you s need see-through properties, uh, this material can be um, worked, if you will, during the processing to make it very amorphous, and if you remember from some of our previous discussions, amorphous is the materials that are see-through, things like acrylics and polycarbonates. So as a fluoropolymer, which typically is, is opaque or translucent, this is the one that we can actually make almost as clear as glass. Now, thickness will vary that, uh, obviously, but this is the one that we would take a look at if you're looking for a sight glass or something that has really good optical properties. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, we can make this material very crystalline. And when you make a material crystalline, of course, you're improving its physical properties considerably. So it's a very unique material in, the, in that we can manipulate it that, uh, that broadly. And it's all done during the processing, uh, specifically in the way the material is brought to its cool down condition. Um, so if you have situations where you need 
a fluoropolymer that's more or less crystalline, this is one that you might want to consider. Um, PCT PCTFB has very good chemical resistance. Um, in cryogenic applications, it is the go-to material, especially for valve seats. Uh, probably the number one material for liquid oxygen, liquid nitrogen, any place where there is a continuous cold temperature exposure. And the nice thing is that as a valve seat material in those conditions, again, it will not embrittle, and you still have enough flex property in it that it will continue to seat as a ball seat uh, or a diaphragm seat or something like that. Um, low permeability to gas. Uh, that's kind of a, a, a given with most of the uh, melt processable, but CTFE or PCTFE has uh, the best in terms of permeability. And that also includes moisture. Um, and by moisture, I mean both uh, saturation and also steam. It is one of the better materials in direct steam uh, exposure. Uh, and then finally, it's non-flammable, as are most of the fluoropolymers, but in this case, the interesting thing is that the limiting oxygen index is 100, which is very, very good for a polymer. Now, the next material we're going to take a look at is FEP. Um, FEP is uh, best known for either film application uh, or heat shrink tubing. When you call TriStar and you want to get a heat shrink uh, fluoropolymer, more than likely it's going to be FEP. There are heat shrink PTFEs and, and other fluoropolymers, but FEP is the most common and it's the one that we sell the most of. Uh, FEP stands for fluorinated ethylene propylene. Um, so it's a little bit of a unique animal. Uh, while it's still a fluoropolymer, there's some um, interesting components to it. Now, FEP has full chemical inertness, very similar to, to, to the PTFE. Uh, temperature range from cryogenic to 500 degrees, so it's a, a very broad temperature range, just like the PTFE. It has uh, superior electrical properties. It's a very, very good material for a wire and cable harness uh, uh, insulating um, sleeve. And that's where it's very commonly used, by the way. Um, FEP in its natural state is one of the, the clearer materials, so its optical properties are pretty good. Not as good as the PCTFE, but certainly pretty good. Um, FEP has very low friction, not as good as PTFE, but uh, of all the other melt processable fluoropolymers, FEP is one of the better ones in terms of its, in, its inherent low friction properties. And anti-stick. Uh, FEP is very common as an anti-stick coating. Um, most of these melt processable, processable uh, resins can be used as coatings, um, so they all have a very specific place that they can be used to coat metal, to coat other plastics, um, so the FEP has one of the better uh, coating uh, values in terms of its non-stick properties. Um, FEP is pretty commonly used as a film adhesive. Uh, because of its melt temperature, um, we can use FEP to bond other fluoropolymers to a substrate. So if you have, uh, say, a Rulon material and you want to bond it to steel, uh, but you don't want to use a cold bond or an epoxy, FEP, um, there is a special grade of FEP that can, in fact, be used as a melt processable film adhesive. Very, very strong. Uh, not as strong as most epoxies, but certainly strong enough for most applications. Um, FEP has great weather resistance. It's inherently UV stable, so for outdoor applications, uh, where nylon will not hold up or uh, uh, urethane or PVC, something like that, will not hold up in the long run, you'll pay a little bit more money for it, but the FEP as an uh, outdoor material is actually a very, very good call. Um, FEP is available in thin films. Um, see a lot of FEP used as release films uh, and everything from molding... Uh, uh, foam insulation in refrigerator doors to release blankets on composite layups uh, in the aerospace industry. 
Uh, again, those anti-stick properties are very, very good with FEP. Um, and of course, it's also available in stock shapes and, uh, and injection molded parts. So very versatile material, FEP. Um, probably one of our uh, higher movers in terms of its end use. Um, next one, PBDF. And PBDF, um, most people know it as Kynar. Um, the chemical name is polyvinylidene fluoride. And uh, this is kind of an interesting material in terms of its end use. It's, of all the fluoropolymers, it's probably the most common in things like uh, chemical piping, uh, valve bodies and pump bodies and uh, fittings and so forth that are going to be used in uh, chemical environments. So labs, um, petrochem plants, places where there are high levels of high concentrated acids and bases. Uh, kynar is a very, very common material. They even have uh, kynar in, in forms of coatings that can be spray coated on the inside of pipes. But some of the other places that there are the other uh, uh, areas that kynar really shines would be in uh, its purity. It's a very, very clean, pure material inherently, low, low ionic impurities. So it's very, very um, well known and well accepted in the wet side of the semiconductor processing world. Uh, it's got very good chemical resistance, again, pretty much the full pH spectrum. Um, very strong material, has great impact strength, and it's, again, one of the other very good materials in the fluoropolymer world in terms of its impact and abrasion resistance. Uh, very good UV stable material, so again as an outdoor material, for instance in a chemical uh, uh, environment, a factory or something, it's a very good material for outdoors. Um, low, uh, low outgassing in vacuum service, this is another reason it's used a lot in uh, semiconductor, uh, even though it may not have the full temperature range in the, um, the hot zones of a, a CBD for instance, but in other applications where it could be in a vacuum environment, very, very low outgassing inherently. Um, radiation resistance, it, it stands up very well to gamma radiation. In fact, uh, uh, we have testing that shows uh, up to 40 megarad exposures for long periods of time, have very, very minimal loss of properties uh, in those exposures. And it has very good electrical, optical, and thermal properties. So PVDF, um, Again, one of the more common materials, best known as kynar, um, certainly another one of the fluoropolymers worth considering, especially in uh, uh, chemical environments. Next one is TFM. TFM is another fairly unique polymer. It's, a, uh, it's actually an alloy between a, a PFE-like material and PTFE. So, what makes that unique is that you get almost all of the properties of PTFV, uh, but in the form of a melt processable material. This is a material that we can actually spin weld. Uh, for instance, you can spin weld a PFA fitting into a TFM housing, and just the heat from that uh, spinning process will weld the fitting to the body and so you have a seamless joint. Uh, very unique uh, property of TFM. Um, this is a product that comes from Dyneon. Um, they are the sole source for TFM. And um, it comes in a couple of different versions, but it's uh, easily processed. It can be compression molded. Um, it can be extruded. There are uh, other additives that can be put into it to strengthen it, but TFM by itself um, has pretty good strength because of that PFA factor. Uh, some of the other things about TFM, it has very low outgassing. Again, um, a, a big thing if you're in vacuum. Um, low permeability. Uh, because it's a, a non-porous material, or very close to non-porous, it has very low uh, permeability in gas and steam and, and in those environments. Um, the low porosity also makes it a very, very good uh, valve seat, for instance, and because of its low porosity and its additional physical strength from the PFA, 
uh, TFM uh, with no fillers actually has the same capabilities in terms of pressure and sealability of a carbon-filled Teflon or a glass-filled Teflon. So if you have a situation where you can't use fillers because of purity issues or, or something like that, TFM is a very good candidate for um, uh, valve seats and um, uh, stem bushings and things like that where you've got a very pure material with excellent physical strength. Uh, the temperature range, um, because of the PTFE component, it's very, very close to PTFE. It's cryogenic up to 500 degrees. So uh, very solid material across the full temperature spectrum of four polymers. Friction is very low. Um, not quite as low as PTFE, but pretty good. Um, so uh, again, as a release material, uh, inherently no additives. It's pretty low friction properties. Um, now, one thing that can be done with TFM, again, because it's got some PTFE in it, is that we can put some of those fillers in that we use with PTFE and further enhance it. So if there's applications where you're looking for, say, heat dissipation, we can add carbon fiber. Um, if you're looking for a little bit extra lubricity, migratory lubricity, um, you can put graphite or moly in it. Um, so it is... It is diverse enough in terms of what we can do compounding-wise to uh, give us a material that can be modified to meet specific requirements uh, utilizing this TFM. Um, and then I mentioned that it was weldable. This, this, again, is a material that you can use traditional PFA welding techniques um, and, um, and weld other fluoropolymers using the TFM. So, this is the uh, fluoropolymer family. There's always uh, diversification off of that basic family. You know, all of these things can have additives put into it to further enhance physical properties, uh, electrical properties, thermal properties. So, uh, the fluoropolymer family is uh, just universally pretty diverse. But the key factors of fluoropolymers would certainly be chemical Compatibility. It is the most chemically diverse material in terms of uh, its inertness of any of the polymers. Um, its thermal properties certainly are another big part of uh, uh, its reliability. Uh, the broadest temperature range of any of the polymer families. Processability. Um, because we can melt this, we can injection mold it, we can compression mold it, you can extrude it into films. You can extrude it into rods, uh, you can machine it, you can injection mold it. So very, very diverse in terms of processability. Um, enhancements, again, like I just said, we can, we can add things to it to make it better. Uh, and then finally, it's electrical properties, uh, pretty universally good. Uh, remember, if there's chlorine in it, we've got to be a little careful and, and double check some of the factors. So, fluoropolymers, good. And uh, if you have any questions about uh, applications for this family of polymers, uh, feel free to contact us through Ask the, Ask the Expert. And uh, visit our blog sites occasionally and uh, check out some of the topics that might have something to do with floral polymers. And uh, we certainly appreciate you joining us again and look forward to seeing you on another Tech Talk.